one of the most beautiful, genuine, hardworking and compassionate people that I know. Mr. Craig Foster. He's a former Socceroos captain and a highly respected media presenter. He joins the Echo Think Tank to contribute his ideas on how social impact initiatives can help sport and business through the current crisis. Craig is well known for his human rights advocacy. And in 2018 and 19, he lobbied to release Hakim Al Arabi, a falsely imprisoned refugee footballer from, from Bangkok Rahman prison through the global movement, Save Hakim. He is a passionate advocate and driver of social change, recently leading the Game Over campaign, which aims to free refugees trapped in offshore detention. He is currently spearheading the Play for Lives campaign, which is encouraging sports organizations and athletes to step into volunteer positions left vacant due to the crisis. Craig's going to be sharing an inspirational keynote speech on how sport, business, and the not-for-profit sector can collaborate in ways that are good for everyone. Good morning, Craig. Hi, Vicky, how are you going? I'm so well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. That's okay, it's my pleasure. So I'm gonna be handing over to you for about 15 minutes. When you see my face pop up, that's about time to wrap it up, but continue just until you've finished. Okay, no problem. Thanks so much. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if it's gonna be inspirational, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be real. And uh, it's gonna be, um, you know, based on some of the discussion that you've just had previously. So hello to everyone. I see you've got, you know, over 120 people or so online here. That's Nice to see people coming together. That's been one of the positive things around this uh, pandemic, of course, and as your former guest uh, was talking about, uh, has made a lot of people reassess where they are uh, in their own lives, reassess where society is, reassess where sport is, uh, and reassess where business is as well. Uh, two uh, very significant socially influential institutions uh, who both, in my view, can do more in the social advocacy space to assist all of us to create a better world on the other side of this. So there's been a lot of talk during the pandemic about um, you know, the inequalities in society. They haven't uh, so much been created, most, the vast majority of them. Of course, you've seen international students here in Australia uh, who have been uh, left bereft of any uh, social support. Uh, any financial support from most governments. Um, some of the state governments stepped up uh, a little belatedly, but thankfully have given some help to them. Uh, and as has many organizations in the tertiary education sector. Nevertheless, uh, homeless refugees, asylum seekers, uh, people on uh, New Start, uh, so many areas, you know, uh, uh, people experiencing domestic violence, women in crisis, uh, mental health services, all of these services have now the, the lack of funding, the lack of appreciation of the importance of so many sectors of society are now being exacerbated, are being exposed. And thankfully, people are having a discussion about how we can create a fairer society on the other side. Would that be fair? I think um, certainly I've had some great discussions in the last month or two with people who've been volunteering with me and around Australia. Uh, we've been connecting in relation to the projects that they're putting together for Play for Lives in local communities or through sporting associations or others. And we've had many, many of those discussions unprompted. So people are reflecting on their own life and thankfully are reflecting on what society is and what society means. What is society for? Uh, is it here? Um, uh, you know, who, is it, who is it here? Uh, in essence, to, to benefit. And of course, the answer is all of us, everyone. Uh, and now we're talking about equality. Sport talks about equality a great deal. Gender equality, uh, disabled and abled, um, sexual equality, um, all, of these different, all of these differences that we see in society uh, as expressed through sport. And sport has many, many slogans, which says from professional level down to community that we have to be a safe space, that we, sport has to be somewhere where everyone has the opportunity to play, that we do a one, wonderful job for the world because we provide opportunity to, to children and others uh, to um, enjoy sport, to um, 
to uh, enjoy the mental, social, and physical um, opportunities and, um, and benefits that come from participation in sport, uh, particularly social, which is an incredibly important one. Um, and yet, when it comes to issues in society, sport and business is predominantly, and in my view, far too quiet. We're seeing the rise in, in Australia and perhaps around the world now of a, a, a new uh, theme of business activism. Certainly some of the younger, most, if you like, financially successful, uh, and, and success is a word that people are starting to redefine a little bit, thankfully. Uh, and it's not only financial, of course. There are people who do incredible work in the human rights and NGO communities in Australia and around the world who are incredible human beings uh, and who contribute far more to society than others who are, you know, celebrities might be a good one, uh, who are, you know, held uh, up as, you know, the examples of what people should be, particularly the young generation of what people should be aspiring to. We're seeing a trend back towards a focus on expertise, which can only be good. And again, this concept of reality television and what we've seen over the last 20 years, including through social media, the um, veneration of uh, views of people uh, who haven't spent the time, who haven't uh, spent the energy to uh, research areas, to, to develop expertise, to be able to develop cogent arguments and, and to have a, a, a capacity to research deeply before they pass that information on to the public uh, is a very positive um, um, development to come out of what is obviously a, a horrible um, a circumstance for Australia and the world. And our thoughts are with everyone who's been affected by COVID-19, of course. So the reason I've just framed that the start of this short discussion in that way is because I wanna see sport and business, but the, we talk predominantly about sport. Sport contribute to creating a better society on the other side. Now, how can sport do that? Well, during this uh, pandemic was really interesting to see where the culture presently exists in sport. The first two responses when the pandemic were hit were quite natural. And this is not so much a criticism of professional sport. It's just where a professional sport has landed. It, it is what it is today. The first two responses were, well, we have to uh, play on, uh, despite the fact that, you know, people are dying and that this is a, a, a incredibly serious historic uh, virus. Uh, we think that we're exceptional. So there's exceptionalism of sporting industry which we see in, you know, Lex Sportiva and other issues. Uh, and we, we have to play on for the people. And secondly, as soon as financial burden started to hit every sector, uh, sport was one of the first really to say, well, we need a government handout. When in my view, it was an opportunity for sport to consider and respond to its deep social responsibility to the country, we're speaking about Australia and the world. And I've been disappointed to see the work of the, um, for instance, IOC, who rather than um, take global leadership to say that, you know, uh, the Olympic movement, you know, has a responsibility to protect people all around the world, to dispel the appropriate messages, to, to put people actually before participation and competition, uh, and to put commercial realities aside, in the interests of humankind, that's what the Olympic Charter is about. The Olympic movement and Thomas Bach was a fantastic example of saying, oh, we're just gonna play on. And uh, if we can't play on this month, we'll play on next month. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious here, but uh, you know, well, we're playing three months time. And one of the, one of the last kind of industries, whilst co uh, countries were largely collapsing under this crisis, the IOC were, were, um, were deliberately trying to delay on the basis that they still wanted this competition to go ahead in Japan, Tokyo 2020. Put the, pol the geopolitics of well, you know, what, what uh, Japan wanted at that time aside for the moment. But the Olympic movement was a great example of an opportunity to give the correct messaging and uh, to talk on the, on the basis of humanity. And they failed. They failed quite miserably. In actual fact, it was the Canadian, uh, might have been the US, but I think it was the Canadian, someone can correct me, Canadian Olympic Athletes Association, and ultimately, I think both the Athletes Association or the uh, AOC, 
and others who started to pull out rightly and say, well, we're not going. You know, our athletes are more important than the Olympics. And that's where sports got to now. Athletes are not more important than sport. But athletes are sport. So we've got, the, we've got to re rewrite this imbalance. And this is how this pandemic, I'm hoping, is making sport reassess its value system. And, you know, where do we see it right now? I needn't go into FIFA's history too much, but what I just might say is Hakim al Arabi was a wonderful example of the inability of sport to break through its institutional, political and economic structures and constraints to actually advocate for and save a kid's life. Uh, FIFA actually has a human rights uh, policy as part of their constitution. And so they were, they were one of the few sports globally, many are fighting this, including the IAAF and Olympic, the Olympic movement is coming along uh, reasonably well. Uh, they had a, a human rights policy which obligated them to actually help Hakim. And even yet, the constraints around that global organisation had to be broken. They had to be, that, that, that uh, wall had to be simply smashed through in order to get Hakim out. And we should all contemplate that as people involved in sport, because what does that say about global sport? <laughs> You've got, an, you've got an athlete, a player, whose human rights are being breached and sport is, is um, you know, the, the default position for um, global football was to, um, was to contemplate the economic and particularly political and geopolitical issues around this kid's life rather than go save him. So in actual fact, it was his... Uh, brethren, uh, his brothers and sisters in football, the Matildas and the Socceroos and others, it was the players that went essentially to get their own player out of jail. That's effectively what happened and forced the game itself to come along. What does that mean for uh, post-COVID here? <clears throat> um, there's probably three areas which are, I, I think are, are worth consideration. One is athlete advocacy. Without the voices of high-profile athletes, uh, Giorgio Cullini, um, Gary Lineker, uh, Robbie Fowler, who was great, hello to Robbie, uh, and, a whole, and uh, Sam Kerr and Alex Wilkinson and a whole range of football people who then uh, you know, encouraged and facilitated Olympians and others to come on, um, uh, you know, which was Nicky Dryden and Nat Galea and Ian Thorpe and, uh, and a whole bunch of great human beings now, now spoke out for him. Without that, those athletes raising their voice, uh, Hakeem al Arabi would be in Bahrain and quite possibly below ground. So the athletes in that situation were very true to the values of sport that they and we believe in. And that is that um, equality, um, opportunity, uh, and the rights of every human being uh, are the most fundamental aspect of sport. That is in actual fact what sport is about. It's also about teamwork, of course. It's, all about, it's also about support and other things. But it was the athletes who were true to the values. I believe in athlete advocacy. And of course, a bigger discussion is around um, the fact that athletes are also flawed and you know, can say silly things publicly. Nevertheless, I believe that athletes should have the right to speak publicly on social issues. So too should sport. By putting the two together, we talk now about human rights. The importance of human rights in sport is this, that it provides a safe space for athletes and sports to be able to advocate for really important social issues. So uh, disabled rights, refugees and asylum seekers is a great example. Uh, you know, the Game Over campaign that I've been heavily involved in is about the rights under international uh, human rights instruments. Uh, of refugees and asylum seekers everywhere, including in Australia. And yet sport has felt constrained to go into that space because they see it as political. It's not political, it's about human rights. It's about human beings. And if sport is not about human beings and the rights that every one of us has, oh, I don't know what sport is about. It's so, exactly why we've got you on to speak today, Craig, okay. because I think that message, you know, this, this crisis creates an opportunity for things to change. And 
if we can look from within to our hearts about what we truly care about on a personal level, but then also at that sport level, at that organizational level, at the business level, then that change becomes something meaningful and purposeful. So I'm so sorry that we've run out of time. Um, we will be sharing obviously all of the videos from all of the speakers today with a, a, a summary page and also links to the Game Over campaign. Oh, uh, which we're, organized, we're part of as a business as well and, and the Play for Lives campaign are very important to us. And thank you so much, Craig. You are the busiest person I know. Um, and I know you don't wear that as a badge. That is just your, I know, you just, you're so committed to helping people and helping make this world a better place. So thank you so much for your time. No, it's my pleasure. Have a good day. See you soon.